Hey everybody, welcome to T-Roy Cooks. Appreciate you joining us for another Tuesday chatting with old T-Roy. Man, I'm sure enjoying doing these chats the old-fashioned way again. I'm glad you guys are too. I had a lot of good response. I'm still going to do the live like I mentioned, but maybe, you know, maybe once a week, once a month or something like that. Anyway, I gathered a bunch of questions up. Let's uh, see if we can get to them. Oh, and uh, cheers to everybody out there. It's hot out here again. Man, I'm ready for some fall temperatures. Yes, indeed. Ready for some football too. All right, um, if you got a question for me after this episode, ask it down in this comment section down below. And be sure and check out the description box to hit show more. If I mention any YouTubers or anything like that, uh, any products, you'll probably find that in the description box. And I'm not going to be putting the timestamps in there, but folks, if any of you want to do try doing that, go for it, send it to me, or put it in the comment section, and I'll uh, pin it to the top. How about that? Anyway, let's get to it. J, Mr. The, Mr. J, how you doing, man? <laughs> he says, hey, T-Roy, have you ever had a problem with meat tasting bland and flavorless after smoking them? Yeah, yeah, actually, like pork butt. Pork butt does that sometimes. He says, I cooked up a couple of lamb shoulders with usual mustard in a dry rub, and after seven hours, I could only taste salt on the, on the crust, which was my fault, put too much salt on it. He said, the meat had no taste whatsoever. Thank you, and keep up with the great videos. I appreciate that, Mr. J. Yeah, man, uh, you know what I find is that a lot of the, the farm-raised animals, you know, like your lamb, your pig, stuff like that, a lot of times it doesn't have a lot, a lot of flavor in the meat itself. Not like if you were to go out to some ranch or, uh, or buy some, like, exotic-type meat that's kind of gamey or go out and get you some, some venison or something or bi bison, you know. A lot of time it's, um, it's kind of bland because it was raised with the whole purpose of trying to get as much weight to that animal, which usually means feeding it a lot of grain and stuff, but get a lot of weight on that animal so they can sell it more for pound, or, or it'll weigh more so they get more for it when they sell the carcass. So, uh, but yeah, it, it hurts the, uh, definitely hurts the flavor of it, man. Just try to get the best meat that you can, the best quality, and uh, that, that should help a lot. You know, uh, like Iberico pork, a whole lot better, a whole lot better, but it's from Spain, so you're going to pay a little bit more for, for it, but yeah, man, Iberico pork's really, really good, just like Angus, Angus got, got some good flavor too, anyway, getting off subject here, yeah, get the best best quality meat that you can, I'm sure that'll help, or, or find some kind of a meat market online, or well, like Lobel's, Lobel's has a lot of good stuff over there, and, and uh, they, they have the natural grade, which is basically the animals just eating what they would naturally eat in their own environment. It's not a lot of grain-fed stuff going on. So get some natural beef, natural pork, natural chicken, you know. Tastes a lot better. Next question from Mike Warren. Cheers to you, Mr. J and Mike. Mike says, hey, T-Roy, do you have any experience with the different lines of briquettes Kingsford has? For example, the professional or the long-burning briquettes. Keep these vids coming, and of course, cheers to you. I cheers back to you there, Mike. I appreciate it, bro. Yeah, man, um, it's just what the name implies. They've got the long-burning charcoals. I think those have more uh, charcoal in them. Makes them last a lot longer. But they do last longer than the regular blue charcoal. And then um, your, long, your uh, what's the other one? Professional series. Professional series... Burns really, really hot, man. I love using the professional professional series of Kingsford when I'm doing steaks on the grill, or if I'm doing um, like uh, some fajitas or uh, chicken, you know, stuff like that. That's gonna cook real quick. That professional series gets really hot, man. Really, really hot. Yeah, you know, just what the name implies on the bag, man. Give it a shot. I, I love all of it. All the Kingsford stuff is great. Uh, Royal Oak's pretty good too. B and B is real good. B and B charcoal, if you can find that. Appreciate the question, Mike. Ben Hall, how you doing, Ben? Cheers to you, my friend. There you go. I'm just drinking some bush tonight, man. That's my usual. <clears throat> ben Hall says, T-Roy, the beer's looking mighty powerful, brother. Well, okay, this is an older question, but yeah, I trimmed it since then. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> I may grow it back in the fall. We'll see. All right. Ben says, my doctor told me to get off the red meat, so I've been cooking the heck out of some chicken and some pork lately. I think it's time I, I man up and learn to cook some fish. What kind of fish works best on a smoker? 
Well, Ben, in my experience, the thicker cuts. And I love Mahi Mahi. That's one of my favorites. It does really, really well in the smoker. And I'm talking about just putting it directly on the grill grate and smoking. If you're wanting to use like some cedar planks or some alder wood planks or something like that, then pretty much any fish. I mean, rainbow trout would work great. Uh, tilapia, orange roughy, uh, any of the thinner fish, you know, flounder probably work. You pretty much smoke anything you want, man. But the longer the fish sits in the smoke, the more smoke flavor it gets. Hence, my idea of having a thicker filet, a thicker fish. You know, swordfish, um, red snapper, um, you know, any of those uh, bass, you know. Any, any of those thicker filets would, would actually get you some nice smoke in the meat, okay? The other ones, the little thinner ones, unless you're putting it on a cedar plank or something, you're better off just grilling them hot and fast, you know, a few minutes, if that, and, uh, and it's done. That doesn't give it enough time to get some smoke flavor in there. So, there you go. Appreciate the question, Ben, and again, cheers to you, brother. Next question we have is from Simon Guerrero. Guerrero, I'm sorry, Simon. There you go, Guerrero. Simon says, Troy, cheers. Oh, there you go. Y'all cheers me to death. Ha! Appreciate it, though. I love you guys. Simon says, you mentioned that you use salt and pepper on your briskets. Is this your go-to rub for briskets? Yeah, it is, yeah. I also like to throw a little bit of garlic powder, a little bit of cayenne powder in there, you know, pepper. Um... And I usually do like a 60-40 pepper to salt mix. Cracked black pepper. Kind of coarse crack. But yeah, man, it's good stuff. That's how we do it here in Texas. And uh, it's just simple, but it's really good. Makes the meat stand out. Uh, he's also saying, uh, I know in Texas that's a very popular mix. Yep, yep. Especially in the hill country. Yes. He says, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it my next smoke. Will there be a distinct taste difference as opposed to the traditional barbecue rub? Um... You get more of a beefy flavor, I think, when you just go with a simple salt pepper rub. The uh, the other uh, store bought barbecue rubs, some of them have coffee in it, which you know, if you're a coffee drinker, you probably like that because coffee goes great with beef. Um, they may have some sugar in it, which may help with the bark a little bit. But uh, as far as the flavor goes, yeah, you'll get some flavor from the rub. I mean, some people put some uh, like hot paprika or something in there, uh, chili powder. So you'll get you'll get different combinations of flavors using different rubs. But if you just want to, if you've got a really nice brisket, I'm talking like prime or uh, or Angus or, or even a better grade than that, put some salt and pepper on there. Maybe a little garlic, cayenne pepper. That's it. You know, that's all you need. It's going to be great. It's going to be fabulous. If you got one of them cheaper cuts, you might want to spruce it up with a little bit of barbecue rub, like we were just talking about. There you go, Simon. Appreciate the question, man. Next question is from The Window Guy. How you doing, bro? I've seen you around a few times. Cheers to you. He says, hey, Troy, thanks for all the great vids. I uh, was wondering, if I'm, if I'm smoking on the Smoky Mountain, the chunks stop smoking after a couple of hours. Yeah, yeah, that usually happens. Uh, he says, if you're doing brisket, do you add more chunks throughout the cook to keep a constant smoke or just let it do its thing? I usually just let it do its thing. You know, the, uh, especially if you space the chunks around and use the minion method. You know, you put some chunks in the very middle. When you put the hot coals right in the middle and they start spreading out, it's going to like those middle chunks of wood. And then if you space some chunks of wood out towards the edges as the charcoal expands outward from that center, it's going to light those other, the other uh, chunks. Excuse me, guys. Anyway, that's how I do it. So you, you kind of get smoke throughout the cook. The other way you can do it is to put your your wood in first, spread it around, and then put charcoal on top of that, and light your charcoal in the middle using the minion method. Works out about the same, but your uh, your wood lasts a little bit longer because it's not being consumed by fire. It's more of a smoldering kind of smoke, which some people don't care for. So try it both ways, see what you like. I just base the wood on top of the charcoal briquettes, though. Works for me. <clears throat> Next question we have is from David Parks. He says, great Q&A as always, Troy. I appreciate that very much. He says, I know, I know you've shown us individually the gear that you use for making videos. Is there any chance of one time when doing a cook that you can do a behind the scenes so we can see your setup with the camera, the lights, the mics for shooting, and all that good stuff? Uh, cheers and thanks again. 
Yeah, David, hey, cheers to you. That's a great idea, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, I've actually thought about doing that. I'm, I've got enough cameras I can do that. So, yeah, I'll give it a shot. Appreciate the question, David. Thanks for the suggestion. <clears throat> DQ'd Barbecue. That's one of my buddies out there on YouTube. Y'all check him out. Link will be in the description box. DQ'd Barbecue. He says, hey, Troy, that beer's looking pretty uh, impressive, my friend. Thank you. Thank you very much. I know you're talking about the old one, but yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, he says, so, I've been uh, seeing some deals on the 14 and a half inch Weber Smoky Mountain in my area, and I've been thinking about picking one up to play with. And uh, my question is, do you think this, that size of Smoky Mountain is even worth my time, or is it a more of a novelty thing? Cheers, brother. Well, cheers to you, bro. It's not a novelty thing. I mean, the... Uh, it's going to work just like your other Smoky Mountains, but it won't hold as much fuel, so you won't get as long a burn out of it, and you won't be able to put as much meat on there, of course. And also, the water pan's not as big. So it's, it's more designed for, like, tailgating or, like, taking out camping. It's small enough where you can, like, put it in a pack on your back and just, t you know, haul it into the mountains or something, or out on the beach. That's what it's designed for. You can't cook a whole lot of uh, food on it at once, but it can cook. It'll cook just the same as the other ones. All they did is scale them down. So uh, I have no qualms about it. I'd get one if I needed one, but uh, I don't do a lot of camping out anymore and stuff like that. No tailgating very much. I just hang out here at the house and, you know, enjoy life. But uh, when, I, when I do get out in the mountains and stuff, I'm usually renting a cabin or something. <laughs> I'm not hauling a tent and uh, cooking and all that stuff with me. So uh, anyway, yeah, I'd say get one. I'm sure you'd love it. Next question is from Con uh, Tom Catone. Uh, I think that's how you say it. Catone or Catone. How you doing, Thomas? He says, hey, Troy, Tom from Massachusetts here. There you go. Like all my friends over there in Massachusetts. Appreciate it, Tom. He says, I just subscribed to your channel. Thanks for all your info. It's helped me uh, a lot. Hey, I appreciate the subscription, man. Appreciate it very much. Tom says, I have two vertical smokers that I've been using for years, and I was given an offset smoker as a retirement gift from my job. Man, you got a cool workplace, giving you an offset smoker for retirement. That's awesome, man. All right, Tom's question is, if I could just use charcoal and no wood, will the charcoal give the meat a funny flavor before it's completely burning? Cheers. It shouldn't. I mean, I, I haven't really experienced that. that that's, that's like when you put charcoal briquettes in the Weber Smoky Mountain. It's the same thing. The only time you get a, no, a little off flavor is if you use lighter fluid. I wouldn't use lighter fluid. But just regular charcoal? Nah, man. If it's a good quality charcoal, you ain't got to worry about it. I don't get any kind of a taste from the charcoal, you know, that aren't lit lighting up, if I think that's what you're saying. So go for it, man. I will say this, though. If you're putting charcoal briquettes in your offset, it may not get hot enough in the cooking chamber. Uh, a lot of these people have, like, the charcoal baskets that they put in their firebox instead of using real wood because... The charcoal will last a lot longer. They don't have to keep going out every hour and putting wood in there. But, especially on cold days and cold nights, you got to watch it because your cooking chamber will not get up to temp usually just from using charcoal. You may have to mix some charcoal with some wood. And, or maybe use some lump charcoal. There you go. A little two cents for you there. <laughs> I appreciate the question, Tom. And cheers to you, brother. There you go. Next question. It's another YouTube friend, Meathead. How you doing there, Meathead? Cheers to you, my brother. Y'all go check him out. Meathead says, Troy, another great Thursday chat. I appreciate the support, man. Appreciate it very much. All right. Meathead says, brown sugar. Good to use in rubs or bad to use in rubs? Should it go on just before placing the meat in the smoker or at the end? Does it pull moisture out of the meat if left on overnight? Cheers. Yeah, cheers again to you, Meathead. I'd say using a brown sugar in a rub depends on what, what meat you're using. I wouldn't put it on brisket, but I would definitely put it on some pork. Sometimes chicken. Uh, but mainly pork. What was the other questions here? He says, uh, should it go on just before placing the meat in the smoker or at the end? I'd say put it on maybe half hour to an hour before you put it on the smoker. That way it'll, uh, it'll kind of uh, melt into the meat juice, you know kind of make the meat sweat 
and it, it helps break the crystals down before you throw it in the smoker. And the last question from Meathead says, uh, does it pull moisture out of the meat if left on overnight? No. No. The, the salt will. Well, will it? I think salt draws moisture out overnight like a dry brine, and then the meat absorbs the moisture back in with the salt, so you get a little salt flavor in the meat. But uh, brown sugar, no. Brown sugar just uh, makes the meat sweat a little bit. It doesn't dry out the meat at all. Brown sugar is actually really good. Really good for the meat. Anyway, uh, if y'all got any ideas on, uh, you know, to add to what I've just said about the brown sugar or any of these other questions, feel free to put it in the comments section. Uh, in fact, I, I, I did it this past week, and I'm going to start doing it, I believe, where I'm putting just the question along with who asked it. So if you look at the description box and find the question right above that, see who asked it, you can put a plus and then their name, a space, and then your your two cents or your feedback so that it'll send an email to that person and let them know, hey, I got a response. <laughs> anyway, again, like I say all the time, we're all one community. Excuse me, man, that beer's hitting me today. Uh, we're all one one lovely barbecue cooking community out there, and we share ideas back and forth. So if I misstate something, which happens a lot, <laughs> or if I, don't know, if I don't know as much as you do about a certain subject, a particular subject, go ahead and chime in down below in the comments section. Feel free to, you know. If you know more than I do about the subject, or you have some additional comments you want to make, uh, some additional feedback, put it in the comments section. And again, if you have questions for an upcoming episode, please put them in the comments section below. Don't send me your questions on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or anything like that. Ask them in the comments section of this video or other um, Thursday chats, Tuesday chats. So anywho, there's my two cents again. <laughs> what else we got here? Got a question here from Joseph Costa. How you doing, Joseph? He says, hey, T-Roy, cheers, man. Cheers to you, Joseph. He says, I've learned a great deal from your videos. Thank you. Hey, thank you. I appreciate that very much, man. Glad you enjoyed them. He says, question for you. Would you consider adding a pellet grill, for example, the YS640 from Yoder, to your arsenal? Yes, definitely, Joseph, I would. I'm kind of waiting for the best, uh, the, the best pellet that I can get, though. You know, I'm still, still debating on which way I want to go, which brand I want to get. But yeah, I wouldn't mind having a pellet. Pardon me, just a second. I noticed I didn't tighten down my boom mic. The boom itself has kind of fallen over like an elephant trunk. So let me go fix this real quick, guys. So that didn't take very long, did it? There you go. All right. We left off with Joseph. Next we have is a question from Hilbert Grim Griving. Griving. Sorry about that, Hilbert. He says, Hi, Troy. Thanks for another great Thursday chat. You're quite welcome. Thanks for watching. He says, I just bought myself some smoke wood, old whiskey barrel wood chunks. Have you ever tried something like that or know if, it's, if it really adds extra flavor? They sure do smell great. Cheers, Hilbert. Cheers to you, Hilbert. Yeah, man, Stu sent me some uh, some whiskey barrel staves that you can cut into, you know, it's like the whiskey barrel, the wood. Um, he sent me like full length that I could cut. So, yeah, man, you talk about adding some really, really nice flavor to your food. Whoop, doggy, that's good stuff, man. I love that. Mm, mm, mm. I need to use those on video. I haven't used them on video yet, I don't think. Doggone, man. Yeah, Hilbert. You try that, buddy, you're going to be going back and get you some more of those. I'm telling you, man, that's good stuff. And, folks, if you've seen the Jack Daniels uh, charcoal or uh, wood chips out there, check that out. That's also really, really good. Yeah, from those dry, uh, the, uh, the oak-aged barrels where they age the uh, whiskey. Cool, man. Yeah, good stuff, good stuff, man. And, Stu, thanks for sending me some of those wood staves, man. I appreciate it. Next question. Oh, it's another YouTube friend of mine, Jatil. I don't know I'm not saying your name right, Jatil, but <laughs> Elton's Barbecue Pit. Y'all go check him out. Link's down below. He says, hey, Troy, question for you. Since you have southern roots, have you ever made barbecue spaghetti, or do you have a good recipe for it? Cheers, brother. 
Cheers to you, Shatil. Appreciate that, bro. Now, that's one thing I've never really made is some barbecue spaghetti. I should probably give that a try. I don't have any good recipes. If y'all got some good recipes, shoot them to me, man. Yep, send me a direct message on, on Facebook probably will work. <clears throat> or email me. If you're not sure how to get my email address, you go to my main homepage for my channel. And you have the uh, what busy videos, playlists, some other stuff. And at the far end down there, you'll see about. Just click about. And that's where my email address is. Appreciate the question, Jatil. Hope you're doing well, my friend. And Jatil sent me that uh, Norway hat I wear sometimes. Love that hat, man. Love that hat. Next question. Oh, it's another good friend. Damien Johnson. How you doing, Damien? Cheers to you, my friend. There you go. Damien says, good to see another Thursday chat from you, T-Roy. I appreciate the support again. Yeah, Damien's been around a long time, man. Good guy. He says, I've been pretty busy here, so I haven't had time to watch all your stuff. And it does. It happens. You know, it's all right. It's all right. He says, I do have a question for you to answer in a future video. Well, here we go. He says, where'd you get that idea of naming your Thursday chat videos? Oh, yeah, like when I, uh, and I started doing it again on these Tuesday chats too, Damien. I look through the questions that were asked in that episode, and I'll find what I think is the best question as far as uh, CEO ranking would go. You know, what would most people be interested in hearing an answer to? So I'll take that question. Sometimes I'll leave it just as it was written by the uh, subscriber, by my fan out there. Sometimes I need to shorten it. So sometimes I'll just kind of change up the words just a little bit to shorten it because you don't want a really long uh, title for your video. But that's where I get it from, from the questions. Great question. Appreciate it, Damien. Thanks again, bro. Cheers to you. Next question, and it's another YouTuber, folks. <laughs> 1984 Barbecue. Y'all go check him out, man. Yeah, we got a lot of YouTubers that watch my channel and watch these uh, these chat videos, man. So y'all check them out, man. Read through the comments section. Y'all check out all the different YouTubers that follow me and, and hang out. And like I said, we're all one huge community here, cooking community, man. Good times, good times. We just share knowledge back and forth. 1984 Barbecue, he says... Hey, Troy, my name is John. Oh, John, I appreciate that, man. I, I had actually forgotten your name, so thank you. So my question is, I have a Weber 22-inch kettle. I was thinking of doing a brisket on there using my slow and sear. Any good tips for me? Cheers, brother. Yeah, John. Hey, cheers to you, bro. For brisket on the slow and sear, or using the slow and sear in the kettle, you're going to have to rotate that brisket around. It'll work fine. It'll work just like you're doing the Weber Smoky Mountain. It'll get the same flavor. But make sure you rotate your brisket. Just rotate it 180 degrees like once every 30 minutes to an hour or so. That'll give you a nice even cook, okay? That's, that's, that way one side or the other doesn't get too hot and start getting a lot of dark color on it before the other side. Even cooking. The rest of it, <laughs> just load that baby up. Let it go, man. Let it go. I've actually gotten, I've got the 22 inch on the, uh, on my end too for the kettle and I've actually gotten about 15 hours on my slow and sear using the snake method on it you know you light one end and just let it slowly progress through with water yeah put some water or some other liquid in there I've gotten about 15 hours and that was during the summer of course but yeah it's about the same length of time you get on the Weber kit on the Weber Smoky Mountain with some good charcoal all right folks that's all we got I uh, appreciate y'all joining us again um, sorry for the short video but, um, honestly, I need some more questions to ask or to answer. So, y'all be sure to ask me some questions in the comments section. That way I can add them to a future chat. And I about caught up with all my older questions I had. So, I really need you guys to ask me some questions to keep these chats going. Otherwise, y'all just going to hear me ramble. And I know y'all don't want that. Y'all actually want some knowledge. <laughs> and I'll be doing another live chat here pretty soon, probably. I'm not sure if I'm going to have a guest yet or not. I'm working on that. And again, if I don't put up a video next week, it may be because I'm out of town and can't, just don't have a video ready to go. Otherwise, we'll see y'all next Tuesday. Appreciate y'all joining us. If you're not subject, please go ahead and subscribe. Click the little bell icon so you're notified. Because if I do a chat that's live, I'm going to create an event. It'll shoot you an email if you hit the notification bell. It'll shoot you an email letting you know I've got a live event scheduled and what day and time of that it is. And you also get notifications letting you know when I put a video up. So it's helpful to do that. 
But uh, yeah, man. Hope y'all enjoyed this. Y'all give me some thumbs up. Appreciate all the good feedback from all you guys. And again, questions, ask them in the comment section down below. I'd appreciate it. We'll add them to another Thursday chat or another Tuesday chat coming up. Anyway, <laughs> thanks again for all the support. Hope y'all share the video. And when you do, please tell all your friends that T-Roy cooks responsibly. Cheers, everybody. We'll see y'all next time.